Hey everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm recording in my car and we're gonna be checking out all the cool things that you can pick up for 3D printing at the dollar store. Let's head on in and check out what we can find. So if you're not already familiar, the dollar store is basically, this is the Dollar Tree that I went to today. It's uh, basically a chain of stores around the US where you can buy everything for a dollar plus your state taxes. So for me, it's a dollar and eight cents. And I was able to find some really good stuff for a variety of different things when it comes to 3D printing on FDM 3D printers, as well as your resin 3D printers. So let's jump right in. And it's really nice and warm in my car. So the first thing I grabbed was these retractable card holders. Uh, these are actually used for a lot of businesses where you might have an ID tag that you're gonna clip on here and it retracts and collapses back into this little mechanism. Well, I end up using these for some of my FDM 3D printers. Basically anytime that you've done work on your machines and end up having to replace some of the extruders or unclip things, uh, things just become loose and you don't want the cables getting in the way. So what I end up doing is strapping these along the top and securing this along the cables. So anytime that it's moving up and down within the build plate, it automatically holds the cable up and out of the way from all of your prints. It's gonna help prevent any failed prints while you're out there 3D printing. I also grabbed a number of different bottles. Uh, some of these are spray bottles. Some of these are just have squirting tops there. This is gonna be great for any of the things that you might be doing maybe later on, not necessarily directly with the 3D prints, but cleaning up or when it comes to actually finishing and painting. I'm really looking forward to these smaller spray bottles. I wanna put some isopropyl alcohol in these. I've seen some techniques when it comes to actually doing painting where you can stipple, I think is what it's called, where you put a little spray just a little bit, you, you missed some isopropyl alcohol on your paints and it's gonna create a little bit of a different effect for your finishing. Uh, yeah, it'll just be great to have these available for different needs when it comes to actually cleaning up or when it comes to painting your prints. Anytime that you're doing electrical work on your printers, you're gonna need some electrical tape. This is probably more than enough to last me well a long time here. So this is, uh, it comes with two rolls for a dollar and it comes out to, I think it's 50 feet a roll or maybe it's 25 uh, per roll. But again, it should be more than enough to last me quite a long time when it comes to repairing some of my 3D printers. Another item I picked up is these plastic shot glasses. These are, again are great when it comes to doing different things after you've already printed your parts. So maybe you wanna mix up some XTC 3D. It's always great to have these little cups lying around or if you're just looking to do some a place to hold in some of your paints or you're mixing resins. These are a great little thing that you can pick up. You might find a better deal of these in bulk at something like Walmart, but since I was here and they had them and it was 24, it seems like a pretty good deal for a dollar. Another one that you might not necessarily think about is these dry erase boards and how you can use these, especially if you have multiple printers up and running or if you have a print farm. And I thought this was a great addition, especially as I'm planning on having multiple machines up and running with Etsy orders. It'll be great idea to have these just going so I have a better idea of when a print's starting and finishing, especially when it's not just one or two printers going and I'm looking at something more along the lines of five or 10 machines. Another great find is this organizer box. So what I'm gonna be using this for is holding all of my different nozzles for my FDM 3D printers. I have those just scattered around in drawers and you're more than likely just like me <laughs> where they're not entirely organized in the best way possible. Or when you get a new 3D printer, it might come with extra nozzles. Uh, I'll definitely be using this in helping identify is it a four millimeter or a 0.6 or a 0.8, etc. cetera. Uh, just a great way to keep these in one location and this should be large enough to have uh, store as many as I have on hand. Another thing that I regularly use is different adhesives like super glue. Uh, they have a variety of different options for you to choose from. I went with this just very basic one. Typically I get my super glue at Walmart and it's like four bucks. So I'm interested to see how this will work out. I'll probably come back and let you guys know on that if it works well or not. They also have a small thing of epoxy, which is great for if you're just planning on doing a smaller job and don't wanna spend all of the money on a much larger bottle of epoxy. Another great one that I picked up are these coffee filters. Yeah, I know, it's coffee filters. Uh, I drink coffee, but I drink them out of those little K-cup things, which are horrible for the environment. But this is 150 of these filters, and I'll be able to use these with my different resins. And 
and when I go to actually filter out my resin, I should be able to use these to strain the resin back into the bottle and make sure that none of the extra particles are, you know, cured pieces there that might have been ended up in the vat are ending up back in the bottle. This will also be used for an upcoming project where I'm looking to see if I can filter out the used IPA and somewhat restore that back to its original clearness. And holy moly, is it getting hot in here. To go along with the mixing cups, another great thing that you can grab are these crafting sticks. You get a hundred of these for a buck and they're really nice and thin. So it really works well for mixing any of those different liquid materials that you might be working with. When again, it comes to finishing your prints. I also grabbed a few different sets of clamps. So you can actually find these there in the store and there is a smaller set that comes with multiple. This is a six piece set. And then these larger, heavier duty clamps. I am always needing clamps for my projects, whether it's uh, doing something with my printers and I might be doing maintenance on the printer or if I'm just looking to hold the build plate down, these would work pretty decently well for that. But in reality, I use these a lot when I'm gluing my prints together or I'm just working on a project after I've 3D printed it. I always, always need clamps on hand. Also just great for having around your workshop as well. I also grabbed some foam mounting tape. I know there's some of you out there that also have uneven sitting printers. And what I end up doing is just shoving a few pieces of paper under there. So this will hopefully be a little bit more of a permanent solution. This is, uh, it looks like it's double sided as well. So I'll probably just remove it from one side and stick it on the bottom half of uh, one of the printers or the feet there that makes it uneven and it'll help level it out. So I won't have that wobbling effect. And speaking of glues, this is a sprayable Elmer's glue. I've not seen this before. I use glue sticks on a few of my print beds and I'm interested to see how a sprayable version of this will work. It's, I'm assuming gonna be the same material as the purple glue sticks, which is my go-to glue sticks that I use for my print beds. So a sprayable version of this would be pretty cool. Peter from Wham Bam also posted about how he found these squeegees for a dollar and use those and cut them down for his different resin 3D printers to help mix up the build plates. Uh, yeah, you probably saw the short video that I just recently posted about these. Yeah, did the exact same thing and now I have purchased multiple of these so that I can cut them to variety of sizes depending on the vat that I'm working with for my resin 3D printers. This right here is such an awesome find and a really good project for you to crank out in an afternoon. It's super easy to just cut these and it'll help keep your vat fresh. I don't treat my brushes very kindly and I try not to spend a lot of money on them. I just recently purchased some expensive brushes from a Warhammer shop. And honestly, I, I think I might get similar results with some of these, even though it's not quite as fine tip. These will be great for, again, finishing and painting your different projects. These right here, I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do with these, but they might work well for larger surfaces. It's just a really weird, funky, says it's a chunky brush and I just thought they kind of looked cool and I figured uh, I could probably use those. And similar to the paint brushes, I also found a variety of different markers. This will again be very helpful when it comes to finishing your different prints. So these were some of the metallic pens here that they offer, a gold, a silver, and a white. I'm not quite sure how white is gonna be metallic. So I'm interested in popping that open and checking that out. But for sure, gold and this metallic here, uh, the silver, I use these pens a lot for different finishings. The other great one here that I picked up was the wood markers. So these are different shades of brown markers that are used for touching up. And if you're trying to get that wood effect in some of your prints, this is a great way about going about it. They also have a number of different sizes of plastic containers. I'm primarily gonna be using this for my cleanups of my resin 3D prints, but putting different liquids in here. I have now a few different versions of this size container where I can put one with water, one with isopropyl alcohol, maybe one with mean green for different purposes here. You'll wanna make sure that if you have a wash and cure station that you get the proper size as well. In one of my last videos, I have this exact same size container and got this stuck inside the wash and cure top. Yeah, not, not, not my best moment. And finally, a really simple one that I use all the time are tweezers. So yeah, the, these come in really helpful with removing small supports, whether they're FDM or resin three prints. Primarily on the resin side, I use these probably more than the FDM side of things. It's always good to have tweezers on hand so that you can get into those small crevices to remove supports or just remove excess print materials. 
I also want to take a minute to say thank you to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in any of the Elgu resin 3D printers or FDM 3D printers or their different resins, you'll find links down below. I'm going to be using a lot of the supplies here that I picked up in today's video along with those printers. Just having these extra accessories on hand and especially that I'm only spending a dollar make it super helpful when it comes to accessorizing and improving your overall print quality of life. Also, a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I just recently posted a lot of my resin and FDM 3D printing profiles for you all to use, including my resin support settings for a variety of different 3D printers. If you're interested in finding out more about my Patreon, you can find links down below. So let me know in the comments below what you thought about this video. I am really interested in making more follow-ups to this video at different stores like Harbor Freight or Walmart. So let me know if there's a particular store that you're interested in and I wouldn't mind walking around and seeing what I can find there that might be helpful for those of you that are out there 3D printing. Hey, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now. Man, oh man, I hope this video worked well because I'm not used to shooting in my car out in the direct sunlight. I don't have a camera set up and it's not lit the same way as my studio space. It's just a whole lot of variables here. Thank you.